Hello everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Melissa. I am Client Relationship Manager for Product Space Solutions. Thank you all for joining our 15-minute Quick Bite session. We appreciate and value your time. All phones will be muted the entire time, so should you have any questions, I encourage you post them throughout the presentation. We may not be able to answer all questions today, but we will be happy to entertain any questions offline. Our contact information is on your screen, and we will also post again after presentation. Quick Bites is a 15-minute weekly educational series that Product Space conducts to help customers understand the latest available PLM and CAD technology solutions. Today's Quick Byte topic is CAD Data Migrator, Windshield to Windshield. Today we will discuss Windshield CAD Data Migration process and Product Space's Windshield CAD Data Migrator. This solution helps companies migrate CAD data between windshield systems. I will now turn it over to Ryan to begin our presentation. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ryan Porzell, and I'm the Solutions Delivery, uh, I'm sorry, Services Delivery Manager at Product Space. Uh, so as Melissa said, we're going to go through <clears throat> some of the features of our windshield CAD data migration tool. Um, now, this is a huge tool and, and a lot of different things that are going on here. So we're going to take a high-level look at, uh, at the tool today. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to introduce um, to some of the problem areas that the tool addresses, uh, some of the use cases, and then take a look at the solution itself. Um, also, <clears throat> uh, we'll take a look at the data migration process, uh, the data migrator, the framework of it, and supported object types that we have with it. Um, <clears throat> so what we have here on the screen is we're going to take a look at some of those problem areas. Um, so first we're going to see uh, how to migrate the CAD data. So over the past several years we've seen a lot of companies who have standardized on the windshield PLM applications. Uh, many of these implementations uh, have different aspects of them. Uh, one being the implementations are at the business level rather than the organizational level. Um, so you may have one parent company that has multiple uh, PLM instances and now as a, as a parent organization they want to combine those all into one giant instance. Um, another place might be um, in earlier stages of the PLM software uh, there was requirements for a lot of customization to get what the standard, standard business might need uh, to accomplish all of their goals. But over the years, PTC has developed uh, additional tools and features within the out-of-the-box tool. And because you've already had those customizations, you have to maintain them going forward. So with this tool, this gives you the ability to extract that data from your highly customized system and import that data into a more out-of-the-box system, which is much easier to administer um, for, for admins and for other business aspects. Um, a third aspect of this is, uh, we could use this tool for extraction only rather than migrating it to another system. Um, for instance, if your company is moving to a new platform, for instance, Team Center or something like that, uh, we can extract that data so that you can move it to that new system. Um, so you may or may not be aware of the actual uh, time and effort that goes into migrating in, uh, this CAD data from one windshield system to another. Um, in the past, it's been a, a major process, a very laborious and a manual process. <clears throat> um, you had to use the worker managers from within ProE to extract, move, and import the data. Um, also, there was a lot of times risks of regeneration issues where you may not necessarily be able to access the data after you were done importing the data. Um, another issue is um, like names. So if you extract a bunch of objects, um, for instance, that use some standard parts, if you go to extract another assembly that uses those same parts, you're going to have import issues. So those are just some of the things that the manual process um, causes problems with. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at dealing um, with these several customers that we work with uh, and why we've developed this tool to complete this action. <clears throat> so what we're going to look at for this instance is a windshield to windshield uh, CAD migration process. Uh, so the typical phases that we go through are the assessment phase, uh, planning, extraction, transformation, loading, and then verifying the data. So as I said, the first step is assessment here. 
Um, so in this step, the source data is identified, explored, and analyzed. So we take a look at all that data. Um, we identify any problems. We identify any duplicated CAD files. We also assess the data quality. And using a windshield diagnostic tool, we can tell if there's issues either in the source or the target system with that data so that we clean it up before we go and migrate that. Uh, the second step in the process is strategy and planning. So in this, in this step, we create a plan of how we're going to migrate. In most cases, we recommend two rehearsal migrations, which is very similar to how we execute upgrades in other projects as well. Um, the typical outcome from this step is now you have your migration roadmap moving forward. Uh, the third step in the process is the actual data migration. Um, so what we do is we extract that data from the source system and place it into a staging area. So after this data is extracted, we now move on to our fourth step, which is actually the data mapping and the transformation. So in this step, we perform steps such as mapping those objects to the organization in the new system, uh, establishing the folder structure that's going to be in the new system, uh, whether it's the same or different from where the data came from. Uh, we also establish the type and attributes, um, users, and other windshield functionality that we need to migrate over as well. So it's a lot more than just moving the data. There's a lot of aspects that go along with that data that we have to make sure that we move over as well. Uh, the next step is loading into the target system. So just like we do with any other project, is we always do things in the target system. So we'll load that extracted data. Um, that newly cleansed data will then be validated. And then upon validation is complete, we then move it to the production system. So again, we have this entire process that we follow to get that data out of one system and into another system. Um, the data migrator currently supports the following general object types. Uh, so all CAD data and subtypes, including their attributes, any representations associated to those objects as well. Um, we can move over configurations such as add stored, latest, all versions and iterations, and baselines. And what we see there is we see latest plus selected. Because there are instances where your latest assemblies may not necessarily reference the latest parts. So in those cases, we may have to grab selected parts of earlier uh, iterations and bring those over as well. Uh, some of the advantages to this approach, uh, it's completely automated. So we don't have to worry about that manual process that we talked about earlier. Um, and it does not require any CAD interaction. So we don't have to worry about the files regenerating correctly or incorrectly. Um, it's capable of migrating CAD data irrespective of the CAD types. So for instance, um, if you want to extract data from ProE, you need to use the ProE Worker Manager. Um, this can actually extract Creo, SolidWorks, AutoCAD, et cetera, from the system. It does not matter what type it is. Um, the migrator is designed to carry operations to database level, so it's not an application-run software. We try to minimize the amount of application-level processes, especially Java-level processes, just because that's where you get your biggest performance hits. So by everything being done on a, at a database level, we can maximize the performance. Um, the migrator can be easily extended to include features like WT part to CAD relationships. So if you do use WT parts now, we can load those relationships as well during the migration. Uh, it would take some modification of the tool, but we have the ability to do that as well. Um, taking a look at a couple uh, use cases that we have, um, we did some work for a semiconductor company um, who was moving from the windshield platform to a team center platform. So here we extracted the latest iteration of um, about 100,000 CAD objects. Uh, it took roughly about six hours. Um, and after the extraction was complete, we had 100% data accuracy. So through all the validation and all the testing, everything functioned exactly as it would if it was still in windshield. Um, another instance that we had uh, was with a food service company where they wanted to migrate um, a specific product out of one windshield system into another. So there was roughly 7,000 items plus its million relationships that it had within the system uh, that we migrated in. Uh, the process took about eight hours. Uh, that went from a win actually from an interlink system to a PDM link system. 
Um, and because they had the same issue we talked about earlier, where it wasn't necessarily all the latest that made it work, we did have to migrate some selected objects as well. Okay, and with that, I'll turn it back to Melissa for any of your questions. Thank you, Ryan. I hope everyone found today's session very insightful and informative. You can view today's and all Quick Bite sessions on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Quick Bites video. If you have any suggestions for Quick Bite topics, we will be happy to accommodate. The link to submit your suggestions is available on your invite page. Now we're going to go ahead and open the floor for any questions. Remember, please post your questions in the chat room. Our first question today is, can you migrate history? Um, you can. Uh, what we were talking about here is we were migrating the latest iterations. But if you want to, we can migrate all versions, all iterations as well. Thank you, Ryan. I do have another question. What CAD types the tool is capable of migrating? Great question. Um, yes, it, now normally we talked about how you can extract um, or export Creo type files from the system using the Creo Workgroup Manager, which is a manual process. Um, we do have the ability because, again, our tool is not dependent on the actual file type. So we can extract anything that's of the EPM document type or subtype. So if that happens to be uh, a CATIA file, a SOLIDWORKS file, um, it doesn't matter. It extracts all that data the same. Sounds good. Thank you, Ryan. We have another question. Is it dependent on source and target windshield environment, example 9.1 to 10.1? Um, actually, that's a great question, and I'm going to defer to Roshan to answer that question. Roshan, could you answer that one? Yeah, sure. Uh, currently, it is designed to work uh, with the uh, same version of uh, the windshield applications. So let's say you are trying to migrate EPM documents, or let's say you are trying to migrate CAD documents from windshield 9.1 to 10.1. So the best approach here would be uh, to upgrade the uh, the source system to 10.1, make sure that they have the same schema, and then migrate the CAD document. So as far as upgrade is concerned, uh, PDC provides a very stable tool in upgrading the application. So once the uh, source application is upgraded, we can migrate the CAD data from source system to the target system. However, we can also ensure that, like, if at all there is no plan to upgrade the actual production and enrollment as far as the source is concerned, we can still try to like upgrade it in a test environment, extract the data, and then migrate it to the target system. Thank you for that, Roshan. We see another question here. How do you ensure data quality? OK. Um, the, the way it is designed is uh, we try to run the WinDU uh, before trying to migrate the CAD data. So WinDU stands for Windchill Diagnostic Utility, and it has uh, several tasks. So when we execute some of those tasks, it tries to identify the uh, issues as far as the data quality is concerned. So. Uh, we go through the reports and see like if there is any issue with the data quality, and then we run through some of uh, um, some of those scripts to fix the data quality issues, and we ensure that the source system as well as the target system they they do not have any WinDU issue, and also when we migrate the CAD data from source system to target system. Once the migration is complete, we run the WinDU once again to ensure that the target system does not have any data quality issues. So this way, we try to ensure that the database uh, um, has, uh, ha does not have any integrity problem. Thank you, Roshan. 
Sorry, everybody, for not introducing Roshan earlier. That is Roshan Hedge, our solutions architect. You will also see his contact information on your screen. I want to thank everybody for your questions. I want to thank you all for joining today, our 15-minute quick bite session on CAD Data Migrator. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to send us an email or give us a call, and we will entertain any and all questions. Don't forget to register for next Friday's session on PTC Performance Monitor. You can visit link www.productspace.com forward slash content forward slash